What's up? I'm gonna give you a video on a piece of equipment that I own, Polaris General, and I'm gonna tell you why I chose that side by side and what led me to getting that side by side and what I've done with it so far and everything I've done to it. No, I'm not sponsored by Monster, but it's morning time. I need to wake up. Okay, first of all, I bought my property out here about three years ago and started out with a four-wheeler. But uh, the jobs I needed to do out here, uh, such as pulling a tow-behind brush hog, which you will see in later videos, um, and moving logs and all this and that, uh, got pretty dangerous, um, and by dangerous I mean means I almost died about twice from rollovers. So I decided I needed something a little bit bigger to do my job. So I went, decided I was going to go with a side by side. Now I didn't want to get just pure utility. I wanted, you know, I'm. I'm 30, I'm single, I got no kids, so, you know, I want to go have some fun every now and then. Um, so I decided on a sport utility, which is what the player's general is, half fun, half work. Uh, what chose me to that was, now might I add, this is 2020 when I got this thing. It was a year after I bought my house. I traded in my four-wheeler for it because, I mean, they're not cheap. So... Uh, the reason I went with this was I looked at, there was really three of them I looked at, and th this was before R Max came out, I think. Um, I looked at the Kawasaki TRX and eliminated that option pretty quick, just from how tall they are and uh, how heavy they are. It's, it's, th that's a heavy bike. And... Uh, Ride quality, engine quality, everything added up to just a big no for me. So, I narrowed it down to two different brands. The Can-Am Commander and the Polaris General. The first thing I looked at was the Can-Am Commander. I think they were around since 2012, if I'm not mistaken. They've been around longer than the General, I do know that. Um, I looked at them, I was just like, okay, you know this and that. Then I looked at the Polaris General and that was, I decided to go with that one and I'll tell you why. It was really three things that drove me away from the Commander. One, uh, the Commander, back then anyways, uh, came standard with nets on the doors. They did not come with hard doors. They make them, but you'd have to buy them. Whereas Polaris had half doors. Uh, second thing was, and I'll show you this later on in the video, engine placement. On the Polaris General, the engine is directly underneath the bed on it. Basically, the bed almost works like a hood. You lift it up and the engine is right there. Um... And it's back far enough where you don't really have to hear it. Like, if I fully enclosed this, you'd barely hear that motor. Um, so, yeah, everything's easier to, to get to. It's right there, except for changing the oil in that damn oil filter. And you'll see that in a later video. Um, engine placement on the Can-Am Commander. It's further up in the center of the chassis. Almost to the point it's underneath your armrest. And, you know, I'm sure they have their heat tape and all that stuff in there. But, excuse me, a friend of mine from work who has a Can-Am Commander, he said, yeah, when you're not moving very fast, it does get kind of warm in there. Dude, I'm a ginger. I'm a very perspirant person. And I don't like sunlight as it is, let alone sitting in a hot cab. So, you know, that, that was another one. And the final one was the engine size. Both of them say they're 1,000s. Uh, at least in 2012, the uh, Can-Am Commander, if I'm not mistaken, was an 800 and something 
uh, two cylinder, whereas the Polaris General was 999. Not that big of a difference, but enough to me, and enough for me to want that. Um, like I said, it's a sport utility. Uh, you can go have fun with it with your buddies and all that, but you got to remember, it's not a razor. It's not. You you want to go hit jumps at you know 20, 30 miles an hour and you know run through trails like 50, 60 miles an hour. Get a razor. Don't 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 get this. This is not the buggy for you. So you need to decide that before you go that route. Um, I have taken this off. I have taken this off roading quite a few times. Uh, it's been to rush off road twice, and it's been to a lot of other local events, which I plan on going to here in the coming months, and I will document that, and you get to meet all my friends. Watch us. I'm going to go ahead and take you around. This, uh, as you can tell, it's it's hard to tell it's general because I debadged it. Personally, I think it looks better. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. All right. So, when I bought this, this is a Polaris General Sport model, which is like the lower grade and all that. I looked at the XPs, but the price they wanted for them was so asinine that I just decided to go with the base model that was naked and just add things to it as I went along. First thing I bought for it was the windshield and the roof. Those are the first two things I bought for it. Well, cruising on these backcountry roads, you realize all the dust gets sucked in the back, so got a back window. Even though it does have some scratches, I am going to replace that this year before winter. Um... So, yeah, it's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take you inside. It's, it's dirty. Excuse me. It's, I use it for work. Uh, okay. So, it's pretty basic. Uh, this also has a lot more leg room than the Commander does. That was another factor. Um, not a whole lot done in here. Except for my stereo system. This is a Swamp Donkey. This is a company, actually, right there in uh, South Central Ohio, actually. Uh, you can find them online. They custom make all of their stereos for whatever you need. This one specifically designed for the Polaris General. It has AM, FM, Bluetooth audio. Uh, they even make them if you really want to fork out the money. Little colorful speakers that light up when it's playing. I didn't see no reason in that, but you got an on and off switch and you got a switch for overhead lights. Uh, they do make a touchscreen audio system that goes right in here. Uh, but I don't feel like paying that kind of money and I don't feel like drilling down in here to put your speakers in. So, we'll go back outside. Like I said, it has uh, hard half doors. Uh, this winter, I plan on getting uh, upper doors for it. Seismic. I'll document me installing those. Uh, some added accessories on this. I have 5150 whips. They are not on here right now. I have whip lights. They are pretty cool. Um, I usually have them when I'm off-roading with my buddies. Just to kind of impress them and so they can see where I'm at. Uh, yeah, it's got, got a decent-sized dump bed on it. Enough to haul a couple chainsaws and some wood and all this and that. I did put a rear bumper on it, as you can see. And we'll just stay back here for a second. Um, the tires. On the, the XP model comes standard with 30 inch tires and 15 inch wheels. The sport model comes standard with a 26 9 12 on the front and a 27 11 12 on the back. 
Now, anybody who knows anything about side by sides knows that finding tires for 12 inch wheels is can be very difficult. So, I went ahead and went with the uh, 15 inch wheel. And so, it's easier to find tires for. Um, originally, when I did this, I got uh, a pair of DOT approved tires. They were called motivators because I thought I was going to do a lot of road riding. So, um, I got them. They did good on the road. You could get up to speed on them. Uh, they did great in the mud, but they were absolutely worthless in the snow. I still don't know why. I've never had a tire that does so good in mud and does so terrible in the snow. So I got rid of them and uh, got new wheels. These are ITP Hurricanes right there. I don't really care about the design of the wheel. I just wanted to go with something that was good and price friendly. These are Moto Claw tires. Um, got a good bit of grab on them. I've, unless I was absolutely buried, I've not gotten stuck in these yet. So, um, and also, when you go from 26s and 27s to 30s, which is what these are, uh, you gain two more inches of ground clearance. Onto the suspension. There. Uh, as you can see, I have Super ATV high clearance A-arms. Now, these high clearance A-arms, like you see there, contrary to popular belief, do not bump you up in height. They don't. Uh, their main purpose is to create an angle that brings the A-arm up and gives you less chance of snagging it on something when you're off-roading, such as ruts, trees, yada, yada, yada. So that's why I got them. And also, they are made out of a much, much more durable steel than the OEMs are. And it's lifetime warranty. I know because I've popped a ball joint out of one and I took pictures and they sent me a brand new one. Uh, these are just the standard stock steel shocks. They are not piggybacks. I thought about putting piggybacks on at one point, but I, I don't off-road as much as I thought I was going to. Not enough to spend that kind of money because those Walker Evans that come on these things, man, them things are not cheap at all. But lift up the bed and that shock right there does come off that holds that but here's your air box your entire engine compartment right here your oil fill your oil checks on the other side um right here is your breather for your centrifugal clutch assembly now on the polaris general if you have 27 inch tires and you go bigger than 29s, you have got to reclutch your system. Uh, new fly weights, new springs, uh, all that. So I have a Dalton clutch on mine. I did a lot of research and that was the one I decided to go with. Uh, it's about 400 and some dollars. And, uh, but it gives you the extra power. It basically works as almost like a tow package on a vehicle. It adds more power to the wheel so you can move these 30 inch wheels or 30 inch tires. You do lose a little bit of top end with it, but I would rather have a few more inches of ground clearance and uh, lose a little bit of, and lose some top end than have top end and be slipping belts. So, I'm going to take it off this damn tripod. Hang on. There we go. Alrighty. So, we're going to move on to the front. Now, there was no bumpers on this when I bought it. Not a front, not a rear one. I bought this front one. I think I might go ahead and get the extension to come up and protect these lights. Uh, I did get a winch on here. A nylon rope winch that I put on. Got the plates and everything for it. That was mainly for, I have used it to get unstuck a few times, but mostly that was for the snow plow, which you will see in later videos. Um, yeah, Super ATV 
A arms, upper and lowers. Uh, just a quick note, uh, the upper and lower fully assembly, at least for the Polaris General, is around $800. It's a pretty pricey upgrade, but it's kind of worth it. I'm going to go ahead and show you underneath the hood. This is where your coolant is, and ignore all the wires. The winch is hooked up here into the bar, as is the rocker lights, the LED lights. Um... The whip lights and the light bar have a 42 inch curved light bar on it. Uh, yeah, your antifreeze and uh, your radiators tucked right back in here. This comes out so you can get access to all that. Uh, headlights, these are aftermarket LED headlights, they are pretty bright. Um, you got to remember that you put them in right because I ran mine upside down for, well, about a good three or four months and didn't know why I was blinding people on low beams. Well, I was running my high beams. So after about uh, 30 middle fingers, I finally figured it out. Okay. It's latched up. Yeah, I try to keep it pretty clean. Um, you should also note that these come with a full skid plate underneath of them. So when you wash them, you need to take that skid plate off because that is where all that mud is going to be sitting. That's where all of it's going to be sitting. Um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty much what it is. Like I said, uh, later on in, in a couple months, I'm probably on getting upper doors to go around all that while I'm out plowing in the wintertime. I will film me doing that for your amusement. Um... What else? Uh, that's, that's pretty much it. The, uh, the A-arms do have grease fittings in them, which I don't believe your stock ones do. So, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, that's why I chose the Polaris General. Um, tons of power. It's a 100 horse, inline twin. Uh, Everything except the oil changes are pretty simple to work on. The only thing that's difficult about that oil change is an oil filter. It's right there on the front of the motor, and it's very hard to get to. Uh, with fuel prices, at one point I considered making this road legal, but that turned into a lot more stuff than I care to get into. So it's just going to be my workhorse around the property right now. Uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of this machine in my videos. I use it a lot. I do not have a tractor yet. That's that's coming in a few years. So, yeah. See you.